Hi, my name is Kyle Farrell. I'm a graduate research assistant at Sam Houston State University. I want to thank you uh, for taking the time to visit our video about developing a peer evaluation Google form. Hopefully we've had the pleasure of meeting you or making contact at a conference uh, somewhere. Uh, if not, be sure to email me at kwf009 at shsu.edu. That email is listed at the bottom of the screen here. But by doing so, if you'll provide your Google email address, I'll be able to share this form with you so that you simply have to make modifications, not necessarily build your own survey. This should save you some time. Uh, if you don't have a Google account, you can build one very simply by just going to Google's homepage. But hopefully you have the account and we've made email contact and uh, I should have given you access by now. So if that's the case, I'll go ahead and get started with how to modify this Google form and how to uh, implement it within your course and analyze the data. So anyway, here we go. We'll go ahead and go over to the form now. So if you're new to Google, I'll go ahead and start uh, from the home page. Hopefully you're signed into your account and you'll see uh, these great icons up here on the right hand corner. If you will, click on the icon that looks like a Rubik's Cube or Rubik's Cube. Uh, it, uh, will contain uh, links to different functions within Google, but we're specifically looking to go into Google Drive, which is this kind of triangle down here at the bottom. So once we're in uh, Google Drive, uh, I have a lot of files sitting around, but if you will, you should be able to see uh, this option over here for uh, things that are shared with me. And what that means is these are documents or forms or uh, any type of uh, cloud material that someone might have shared with you and uh, if you've requested the TBL peer evaluation survey by clicking this you should be able to see um, what I have shown you so be sure to click shared with me once you scroll down you should be able to either uh, see it pop up or scroll down it's labeled TBL peer evaluation tool once you click on that it'll bring you up into uh, the uh, page where you can make all your edits uh, to the survey or form itself. Now our uh, initial survey was developed um, so that uh, we could sort this data easily and simply uh, within uh, Microsoft Excel when it's finished but also uh, in doing so there are some you know things which we'll need to modify before it's able to be uh, sent off to the class. So what we start out with is asking students to enter their name and then which team they're on. If they have a team number or if your teams have names, you could develop this drop down box uh, for team names. So what we have is as team number. So I'll edit this real quick so that you can see. The question simply asks, what is your team number? And then it's got options for you to uh, put in whatever their names may be or teams may be. So for us, we have team one and then uh, team two, so on and so forth, and you can add as many teams as you have there. Once you're finished, we always like to make sure that all these questions are clicked uh, for required question, and then you can click done. When you get to the first page of the form, this is where team members will start evaluating others. So on this first page is where team members will start evaluating uh, their fellow teammates. Uh, what you'll need to do here, and this is probably the most cumbersome part about uh, bringing this form uh, into your own classroom, is that you'll need to edit this first question uh, so that team members can uh, find the names of the individuals on their team. So once you have this form pulled up, you'll just come over here to the uh, pencil icon and click edit. And then uh, what we initially do on uh, the first time we initiate the peer evaluation uh, during the semester is we will go ahead and uh, copy and paste over our role. What we do like to do, uh, since we have 14 teams with five team members on each, uh, we have quite a few students. So what I like to do 
in order to help students out so that if they don't know someone's name by this point or if uh, they need help sorting through all the names, I put the team number first and then I'll type uh, their first and last name. So team one, John Doe. And then I'll go down and type the other names of the other students. Uh, unfortunately, you can't upload um, text into this option or anything like that. One thing that I do find helpful is that you can split screen uh, if you're working on, I believe, any computer these days. <laughs> you can split screen and uh, pull up your role or your roster and you can copy and paste names in. But this first uh, question edit is the longest and it does require you to enter the students names either by typing or by copying and pasting. But I do recommend putting team number in front of their names so that as they scroll through the list they can uh, see uh, the, which team people are on and use that as an identifier to find their teammates. Uh, one neat thing about these uh, questions as you edit them inside Google Forms is that you can change the order of uh, names if you need to. So say I got down to team two and team three and I had you know students on these teams with uh, names here you know don't ask me how to pronounce that one or that one but say I need um, I miss someone on team one. By clicking right here, you can drag, well, this, you can drag your uh, responses to the question and put them in the order you want them, even if you don't type them in the right order. So after you have them all typed in, you don't have to backspace them out or anything. You can simply scroll or move them up and down by using this icon here on the left hand side. So anyway, once you have this question like you desire it with all of your uh, roster in it, uh, that's really the main um, component of the modification. So once you click done here, what we like to, uh, to tell people to do is to go ahead and duplicate this question. So uh, when we're doing peer evaluation with five uh, uh, member teams, well, each individual who's taking this will... Uh, evaluate four team members. That being so, we'll duplicate, duplicate this question four times, or three times, sorry. And uh, you can do that just by clicking this duplicate button. So I've duplicated it, one, two, three, I've got four of these questions here. What that does is that allows me to take the time, or take uh, the question that I just developed with my role in it, and apply it to each one of these pages on the peer evaluation survey so that when I get to team number two I don't have to go in and edit this question and then type all my names in again they're already here so that will speed up the time so once you type in that role uh, into one question you can duplicate that question and then drag it down to the other pages. So this is team member two's evaluation. Uh, we'll get here, we'll drag it down. This is team member three's evaluation. We'll go back up here and do it one more time. And that's, oh, no, that's three, sorry. This is team member four's evaluation. So now I'll scroll back up to the top and I'll go down through this one more time so that you can see uh, how the survey is set up and will work. But the student will enter their name, then they'll enter their team name or, or team number, wh whichever you prefer to add here. If you need to edit that, you can simply do that by clicking on the pencil again and uh, changing the team names uh, as they suit your class. So anyway, enter their name, enter their team number, they're going to select a group member from their list to evaluate uh, a group member. And then they'll scroll down and we have uh, seven or eight, I think there's eight now, criteria questions which we ask them to uh, complete before they rank their team members performance but we ask them if they did their fair share of the work, 
with this person cooperate with other team members, shared responsibility, so on and so forth. Um, we ask if they always submitted their best work is one I'd like to work with on future projects. We find this to be a very key question. And then lastly, we ask them to score uh, the performance. And uh, unfortunately, this 10-point scale is a limitation of Google Forms uh, when we're looking at uh, basically scaled uh, questions within this uh, platform. But uh, we do like it because it's um, relative uh, and it sticks out. If someone really hammers a student by giving them a two or a three, when we do our analysis, we can see that and uh, hopefully we can catch that before it happens. But most of the time, we see students ranking either 100, 90, 80, or 70. Hopefully, that's your class as well. Um, but anyway, there's room for additional comments here. And uh, we encourage students to, to do so, if, if they, especially if they're going to dock a student. We ask them to explain why. But we don't necessarily require um, them to add additional comments. So if you notice, if you go into additional questions, we do not have this box checked or to require this question. Uh, we do not do that so that if they don't have anything to say and the student performed well, they can go ahead and move on to the next team member. So they'll go and do this evaluation for uh, all the members on their team. And then down at the very bottom after they rank their fourth team member, there's a section for self-evaluation. We ask them to rank their own performance uh, and then provide some comments about how they feel they're uh, uh, doing within the course. And we launch this uh, both at mid-semester and at the end of the semester. And so in doing, you know, the literature says multiple things uh, on both sides of the issue on whether or not to do multiple uh, peer evaluations within the, within the course in regards to team-based learning. However, we like to uh, give students uh, who may have not been performing as they should have in the first part of the semester that opportunity to build rapport with their teammates over the second half and uh, correct any of that behavior before they get docked on their grade at the end of the semester. And again, we are working with an undergraduate course uh, in ag economics uh, and also in ag sales, so uh, keep that in mind. So once you have the form modified and uh, suiting your needs, in order to publish this uh, you, and send it out to your class, there's a couple ways you can do it. But by clicking Send Form, you'll be giving a, given a link that you can use. So you can copy and paste this link if you use um, Blackboard or uh, another type of educational online platform. You can use this link uh, to send out to students through those platforms. Or uh, if you'd like to embed the uh, survey into Blackboard or some other uh, educational platform, you can simply click the embed uh, button up there and it will give you a code. You can copy that and then you can actually have that survey sitting in Blackboard for students to complete there. Uh, if you need more help with how to do that, feel free to give me an email and I can explain that to you. We're running out of time, so I'll probably just go ahead and make a second video on how to analyze data, and then we will uh, link those together. But hopefully this video gave you a quick uh, intro to the tool and uh, showed you how to modify uh, the survey based on this select a group member question in order for you to be able to use it uh, with the students in your course. But please check out my other video because I'll show you how to get the responses that this survey generates um, into Excel and then how to analyze that Excel data so that you can get uh, peer evaluation grades and comments back to students in a quick and uh, efficient manner. Thanks for your time. Again, I'm Kyle Farrell at Sam Houston State University and my email, if you need it again, is kwf009 at shsu.edu. Thank you.